Hey, Honors Bulls. This week on the Honor Roll Podcast, we're talking to student Chris Uwais, who was selected for three national competitive awards this year, the Gilman Scholarship, the Public Policy and International Affairs Program, and the Phi Beta Kappa Key into Public Service Award. Chris is joining us all the way from Paris, where he is currently studying abroad, to talk about how to win prestigious scholarships and make meaningful opportunities for yourself. Stay tuned to hear all about Chris's journey coming up next. Hey, Honors Bulls. Welcome to the Honor Roll Podcast, the flagship podcast of the Judy Genshaft Honors College Podcast Network. I'm your host, Caroline Merriman, a fourth year student studying English and biology at the University of South Florida and a member of the Honors College. My co-host this week is Fabiana Rakenna. She is a third-year student at the Honors College, majoring in business analytics and marketing. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Fabiana. Nice to be back, Caroline. Nice to have you. As always, we like to start the podcast off with one big question. So my question this week is, what is one uh, public issue that you care a lot about? I would say, given that I've grown up in the Tampa Bay area my whole life, specifically in Clearwater, but I've just seen um, in the past, you know, couple of years that homelessness is a mm-hmm. big issue, especially in like downtown Tampa and surrounding areas. So that's something that I see and I would like to kind of aid in my community by volunteering and kind of being proactive about those things. What about you, Caroline? Um, I think for me, um, just as someone who's, you know, really into like biology and things like that, um, what's, you know, an important issue to me is um, just like wildlife preservation and um, keeping our cities natural. Um, And I just think it's really important as a student that we're kind of attuned to like what's going on in our community because we do have access to, you know, opportunities where we can actually like make positive change. Absolutely. I agree. And so coming up next, we actually have a student, Chris Uwais, who is very involved in public policy, um, international policy research. And he's going to come on the podcast and talk all about um, his time with national security and foreign affairs, as well as his journey obtaining a prestigious scholarship. So stay tuned. Hi, everybody. My name is Bethany Jowers. I'm one of the graduate assistants that works here in the Honors College, and I'd like to invite you to participate in the Grand Challenge 2024 Investigation for Action. So for the Grand Challenge, you're going to submit a research poster investigating a barrier faced by somebody in the disability community and propose a solution that incorporates one of the UN SDGs. The deadline for this project is going to be on midnight, November 11th, and you can visit the Honors website if you need any more information. Hey, Honors Bulls! Welcome to another episode of the Honor Roll Podcast. This week, we will be talking to Chris Uwais, a student at USF who was selected for three nationally competitive awards this year, the Gilman Scholarship, the Public Policy and International Affairs Program, and the Phi Beta Kappa Key into Public Service Scholarship. Chris is also our first non-honors guest on the podcast. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Well, my name is Chris. Thanks for having me here. Um... I am a senior right now at USF. I'm studying international studies and economics with a minor in legal studies. I'm very happy to be here. I'm currently in France, tuning in um, from an exchange program in Paris, France, and I look forward to this discussion. So, Chris, you recently received the Phi Beta Kappa Key into Public Service Scholarship for your commitment to uplifting the community. So can you tell us a little bit about what the scholarship is and why you received it? Yeah, absolutely. So the Phi Beta Kappa Society is a, is a national society. It's actually one of the oldest and the most prestigious in the country. Um, I think it was founded around 1776. Don't quote me on that, but it was it is very old. It has to it has a huge network of you know um, of novelists of of uh, pre- previous politicians, scientists, experts in the, in many different fields. Mm-hmm. Their main goal is to advocate for um, the advancement of liberal arts and sciences education. And so this specific scholarship is awarded for um, 20 students on uh, annually. Um, it is uh, both a, of course, a, there's a financial um, award in it, but the, the better part and the most more exciting part is is the conference that you get to attend uh, during the summer. So that was in uh, May. 
Um, and it, it was simply a fantastic opportunity. Uh, you get grouped with the rest of the 19 awardees um, and you attend multiple conferences. You get to speak with a lot of people that are interested in or that are already in the um, for uh, in the in the public uh, service in the public sector, um, serving the public in many different sectors and jobs. And um, so it was a, simply an impressive opportunity to meet all of these um, fascinating students that all have their own ambition in, in integrating the public service and serving serving the public. That's wonderful to hear, and congratulations again. Can you tell us mm -hmm. about anyone that you met there at the conference that kind of had like a really deep impact on you or any memory that you have? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's there's this one of the awardees that um, one of my colleagues there and. Um, the, the the first conversation I've had with him, the, the second question, I was like, well, hey, what, what college do you go to? The second question was like, well, what do you what do you want to do? You know, we're all into the public service here. He was like, I want to become president. And <laughs> he's, uh, he's, I mean, he's about my age. And mm -hmm. that's something that's usually, you know, when as a kid, you, you answer this question. But yeah. I was really impressed about his, his really, he's very, he, he's very serious about this. And Indeed, throughout the conference for over the next few days, I saw that in him and he has great interpersonal skills. When you talk to him, you feel like you are, uh, you know, you're connected spontaneously with this person. Um, he has great ambitions, uh, great projects for, for, you know, for serving the community on a local basis and on a national basis as well. And so this this was something that that really will will stay with me from this conference along other different along a lot of other things as well um we got to uh we got to attend a conference where we received the award and it was in the senate hall on capitol hill wow. and it was simply an unforgettable memory um we hosted as well um different um experts the the director of the united states institute of peace and among other individuals as well and so it was it was definitely a great opportunity as well this one this memory will will stay with me forever um, how long does a program last? Is it something that, you know, continues for a few years or is it just a yearly um, type of deal? Yeah. So what the, the year you receive, uh, it's a year award. So it's an annual award. Um, and, and then once you, you you do the conference in the summer, um, you are a forever alum of, of, mm -hmm. this, uh, of this of this uh, network and this community. And uh, you, you get to always connect and, you know, touch base with with all of the um, all of the individuals that work within the society as well. How did you hear about the scholarship? Um, and furthermore, like what parts of your application made you, you know, get a, a, such a scholarship? Yeah, um, I heard about the scholarship through the Office of National Scholars on campus, mm -hmm. uh, a great resource, which I'm happy to talk about more extensively <laughs> later on. Uh, but a, a part, of, I think a part of, well, the, the application uh, process consists of, uh, I think, five essays. So it's it's quite a bit of writing, but it's a very interesting one because it's, it's definitely a highly personal application where you get to talk a lot about your own ambitions and and you get to present your character into the liberal arts and education. Mm -hmm. um, what uh, what stood out for, for for my application? I think it's simply holistically everything together, and and my background from you know uh, growing up in Lebanon and and moving back to the U.S. as well, and so bringing together all these uh, different pieces uh, and putting it into one application uh, was, I think, that helped me stand out in the application process. Um, you touched on ONS before, um, and you mentioned that it was about like five essays applying. So I'm sure this was a really extensive application process. There's probably interviews and things like that. How did ONS support you through your journey um, applying for the scholarship? Yeah, ONS is is a great resource. A great resource is even an understatement to say. Um, the Office of National Scholars is, you know, located for those who don't know in, in the Honors College. Um, specifically on the second floor, if you ever want to visit. Um, they're really a great support system to introduce you to new opportunities that you hadn't heard of. Mm -hmm. um, most of the opportunities that you listed previously, maybe not the Gilman, but the rest of them I had not heard of. 
uh, quite honestly. And I had thought that I was, you know, I've, I'm always on top of it. I know all the scholarships and awards, but really the the Public Policy and International Affairs Award that was really a, a crucial part of my uh, journey. Um, I did not hear, I had not heard of before I met ONS, and so they really they, their mission is to present these opportunities to students and guide them through the process, the application, the interviews. And these awards are, um, most of them, or all of them, are highly competitive and requires a high level of writing, high level of preparedness in terms of experiential and internships and, and research as well. And there are different types of things. It could be, could be a research fellowship, and it also could be a graduate school application or a graduate school scholarship. And so I highly recommend anyone here who's listening and who's a fellow bull, um, go to the second floor, Honors College, and and and, in, and it's very important also to emphasize it is open to all students across all departments, colleges, and schools at USF, and not just honor students. So that is also important to note, uh, since we we sometimes assume since it's located in the Honors College and it's simply for honor students, it, it is also for non-honor students. Absolutely, that's a great resource, and thank you so much for sharing that. Chris, I want to kind of pivot the conversation a little bit to your involvement on the USF campus. So you were the treasurer of the Lebanese Student Society, the director of Middle Eastern Affairs at USF's John Quincy Adams Society, and you're also the member of the Dean Student Leadership Society. So how has your involvement in all of these organizations really shaped your college experience? Yeah, um, so I moved back to the US in 2021 for college, and I really did not know anyone. When I tell you no one on campus, I did not know a single person at USF. So I really wanted to find a way to to find, you know, to meet new people, meet new friends. That's the obvious reason of why people get involved in organizations, but more so I wanted to find a, a mission for, you know, for for my career. What do, what do I want to do? Uh, and this was a crucial first step um, to to find to find this mission and to find this purpose. So I went in and um, first um, I had a friend who reached out um, that I had met on campus who was also from uh, Lebanese origins and wanted to found the new uh, a new club for uh, a new society for the Lebanese. But it was more a society for all the Arabs on on and on campus and non-Arabs that would come and join us in in our traditional um, social events and get to the, the opportunity to introduce them to this culture. Um, and the John and then I you know move moving forward the John Quincy Adams Society was another opportunity for me to just you know and in, in, get you know involve other students that are not necessarily majoring in international relations or political science um, and get it get them involved in this field um, provide them platforms to to get involved in this type of discussions as well because this is something you know if you're an engineer if you're in med school you don't necessarily talk about these type of things so the john quincy adams was this you know platform that is still there um and and just gives this platform to, to students that are not necessarily in this uh, field to, to talk about and discuss and, and learn more about foreign policy and, and, and just international affairs in general. And uh, I need to mention Project Downtown Tampa as well, which is a, a charity organization on campus. Um, and it simply has become a family to me because it is such a great community that meets every Friday at 4 p.m. at the MSC Food Court, Marshall Student Center's Food Court. And their goal is to fight hunger in, uh, in uh, downtown Tampa. And so what we do is we, we get together, we wrap sandwiches and sometimes hygiene kits. Other times it could be, you know, hot meals and uh, drive together to downtown Tampa and, uh, you know, spread it across the, the underprivileged communities. And so this was also a very fulfilling opportunity, just other than the academics and the socials. It was more of on a personal level, I was able to um, just to learn and to keep this this uh, this willingness to give to keep it going, uh, and then at the same time, I I gained lots of beautiful and amazing friends at the at the association. I think it's really cool that you mentioned you were able to find places that weren't just important to get involved because of your career or your future aspirations, but that it was important to make friends, to find community, to invest in giving back to other people. And that those experiences, um, they gave back to you in return. Why do you think it's important for, you know, other college students to 
actually get involved, not just with USF, but with the actual, you know, community that they're living in? I think it definitely prepares you to what's for, to what's next for you. You know, after mm-hmm. you graduate, uh, instead of just being shocked by what's what's out there, what's in the workplace, what's in the society outside of college, these kinds of opportunities will prepare you really well by being able to talk to these people by you know like-minded or not and uh, and this is a great thing to do which is just to get together with people who not necessarily think the way you do Mm -hmm. and uh, this is also something that i've experienced at usf through these organizations and events and conferences and so and it has helped me you know understand and engage in debates and in very discussing very controversial topics and this is something that you will encounter that we will all encounter as as graduates and postgraduates and so that's and i think that's mainly i think among different other reasons but this is mainly i think why students really need to look into organizations events be it academic or not but i think it's it's highly important i think that kind of goes to reiterate what we always say on the podcast which is that there's a place for every student at usf Mm -hmm. and if you feel like there isn't you can always create that space. You can create a new community just like you did, Chris. Um, I also wanted to talk about the numerous internships you've had, including uh, an analyst intern at the DIA, uh, the administrative and policy research intern at the American Task Force on Lebanon, and the research intern for the American Foreign Policy Council, and (laughs) there's so (laughs) many words, uh, the data analytics and IR fellow at Carnegie Mellon University. Can you tell us a little bit about, let's start with the Carnegie Mellon one. Absolutely. So the Carnegie Mellon Fellowship was through the PPIA Fellowship, Public Policy mm-hmm. and International Affairs, which I applied for as well um, through ONS, the Office of National Scholars. This fellowship is not only for you know folks who study political science or international affairs, but it is for students who come from you know any background, it could be engineering, computer science, but who want to further their, um, you know, their career into public policy and the public service. And so um, it was a great opportunity. Indeed, I was, it was um, with 25 other students from across the states and uh, different colleges. And uh, we uh, we stay over at Carnegie Mellon's uh, campus in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, the main goal out of it is, you know, there's one part that you take classes to um, in, in in different areas, sometimes they're close to master level classes as well. And uh, the other main part of it is also a project that we work on, um, that is to use all of these skills that are being taught in those courses. And the skills are usually, I mean, at Carnegie specifically, the track was data analytics focused. And so it was how to use and uh, repurpose or harness these technologies, which Carnegie is is great in advancing, and repurpose them and use them towards uh, the public sector and public service. And so we did a project on uh, the impact of abandoned mine lands in Pittsburgh, which is a very serious Mm -hmm. issue up in -hmm. in the Northeast, and their disproportionate impact on on different communities and special communities of color using the you know the technology the data that we were able to gather and, and speaking to people and reaching out to communities uh, community leaders um, in Pittsburgh and so this was you know this was just a, a really great opportunity to do maybe a small scale project on the city level so I can further you know further down uh, um, improve that and, and do something more maybe national or international development level but um that was you know that was the fellowship and indeed i i um highly recommend anyone who's interested in public service from whichever background you come from definitely apply hi i'm honors advisor megan bronstein I meet with students all the time, and one of the things that is the most commonly asked questions is um, how to make your resume stand out when you're applying for jobs or for graduate school. And one of the things that I encourage students to consider is to pursue admission to prestigious honor societies like Phi Beta Kappa. Phi Beta Kappa is the nation's most prestigious honor society, recognizing the top liberal arts students at the highest ranked institutions across the country. Membership in Phi Beta Kappa not only enhances your resume, boosting job and graduate school prospects, but also places you among elite company, including presidents, Supreme Court justices, world-renowned scientists, authors, and cultural icons. Learn more about Phi Beta Kappa. Visit usf.edu slash Phi Beta Kappa. Can you tell us a little bit about what initially got you into public service? Like, what was your 
kind of your light bulb moment, your aha moment where you knew this was your passion and you wanted to continue pursuing it and make it into a career? Yeah, I mean, I I don't think there's an aha moment. It is it is a combination of multiple events that have happened throughout the years. As I mentioned, I grew up in Lebanon, mm -hmm. and uh, Lebanon is a place where if you're not interested in politics, politics are interested in you. So <laughs> there is no way you will avoid, you know, especially in 2019, 2020, right before COVID hit, it was a very, it was a very, you know, chaotic moment, chaotic mm -hmm. times in Lebanon. So I got involved as a young student in high school and in the, uh, you know, in the popular uprisings to, you know, demand for better opportunities for the young people, for the young generations. I was, you know, leading quite a few of the youth groups in those protests, um, sometimes walk out of classes and stuff, but it was, <laughs> it was all very exciting, very optimistic moment. And I knew that I wanted to always be involved with the community and be able to represent communities and, and groups that are advocating for something better, for something better for the public, for everyone, you know? And uh, so that's in 2019, but this all sort of went to a little bit of waste because things went got, got even worse. The economy, COVID hit and all that. In 2020, it was, uh, uh, there was, you know, a, a massive blast and explosion that happened in Beirut while I was there. And then it, it was due to bad and public mismanagement. And and uh, and so I I saw both both ends of it, the really good and exciting part of being able to advocate for your rights and the really bad part where, you know, um, where, where you will have 200 people die because of something very tragic. And at the end of the day, it's because of public mismanagement. And so I really wanted to take both and and just use my education further on and mm -hmm. to, to advocate for what's good for the people and, and just get stuff done, <laughs> basically. It's really admirable that you've taken your lived experience and you've made opportunities out of that um, and that you're working towards making a greater good, you know, for other people, not just for yourself and for your own future. How do you hope like your your past experiences at USF and doing internships, um, how do you hope those pair with your interest in public policy in the future? So when I when I started my first internship in Washington, D.C., it was my first sort of, you know, in person, serious thing, wearing a suit every day to work and stuff mm -hmm. in nine to five. And so it was very it was very interesting process and, and transition. But I hoped back then that it would really, you know, I had the the ambition of going into the foreign service and just doing foreign policy. And that's that's all I had in mind. I really didn't know what exactly interested me, what what tools can I use. But then being in Washington, D.C. really helped me talk to a lot of people and explore what are other opportunities as well. So I kind of pivoted, but not really a massive pivot into international development. And and I explored an entire new field to me, which was, you know, the field of development. And then further down, Carnegie Mellon introduced me, or before that, I was really interested in using the, the you know, the, the, the tools of data and development. And so these opportunities really helped me narrow down, but more so define really what mm -hmm. I really want to do um, and what's what's next for me. Um, although it's still not as precise, not as clear, but it has helped me tremendously figure out what the next step could be or what other options I have. Because, you know, maybe staying at USF, there are a lot of pros to that, but the cons is you don't know what other things are going on, maybe academically in terms of research. And so moving to a different city, you know, not just not necessarily abroad, but just DC. I was looking into other things that you know I didn't know development was that of a prominent topic and and a useful one. And so that's how the internships, the many internships, are helping me, are still helping me today in defining what's next. I think it's so important to expose yourself to different environments, just as Chris is doing. And right now you're actually calling us from Paris. So can you tell us about what it's like to study abroad in France this fall and why you chose to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I didn't choose the uh, the least cliche destination, but I am... <laughs> I am, I am in Paris right now, um, and I am actually loving it. It might be the honeymoon phase, but I'm hoping it lasts <laughs> long. Um, it is. I'm in my 
going to my third week here. So it is part of an exchange program um, that is between sort of a partnership between USF and an institution called MISEFA, M-I-C-E-F-A. You will find it on the Ed Abroad, Education Abroad, USF's um, list of exchange programs and um, and basically you can do either a semester in Paris or a full year but once you are you need to be nominated by USF and so you go through an internal process and once you are nominated and get in the USF nominates you you are basically into the program and what is really cool about this is that once USF endorses you you are accepted into 18 universities in Paris so you get to choose which university you want to study in you know, you, you go, you look into the course, uh, the course catalogs, which, you know, or the locations, if you prefer locations. So, and, and you really get, it's, it's very flexible. Um, and it's really, I mean, uh, financially wise, it's an exchange mm -hmm. program. So you, you are paying in state or you are paying whatever. I mean, I think it's even in state for international students if you go to Paris and you get into the program. So it's a financially convenient and it's Paris. <laughs> uh, I've uh, I've met, uh, there's two other USF students. So I think on average is usually two or three that gets um, endorsed or nominated per year. Um, and I'm currently doing my, I'm taking my classes and you get to take also master's level courses if mm -hmm. you are in your senior year and you uh, in the US is a master, first year of master's level here in France. So I'm taking courses in uh, data analytics and econometrics higher level ones, so really fulfilling some requirements back back home at USF mm -hmm. while enjoying while enjoying great food, great arts. <laughs> it's it's an art space that's just amazing. And uh, yeah, reconnecting with the French culture has, has been great. Have you gotten to do any sightseeing since you got there? I would say yes, but not enough. It's never enough of sightseeing here in, in Paris. There's just a lot to see. There's a, a lot of museums, a lot of nice parks, and I am taking advantage of the good weather right now um, before it gets a little bit too cold. You know, us in Florida, we're not very much used to that. <laughs> so kind of um, pivoting from, you know, your time in France, um, what advice would you have for students who are interested in politics or foreign policy as a career? I think um, one one advice I would say for students, especially, and, uh, and there's a big obstacle that you will face is, and it's a reality for students who want to do internships in foreign policy and international affairs before integrating the career. And this reality is unpaid internships, unfortunately, and unpaid opportunities. It is something that, um, you know, we need to acknowledge and we need to face. And, you know, if you can find a paid opportunity, great. But if you, you know, if you're looking to get it, go into the public sector and and you know get an internship with federal and at the federal government, well, today the federal government most of them are paid. But unpaid internships are a reality that us students in in foreign policy and in politics need mm -hmm. to to face. That is still a reality today. Do not shy away from those opportunities. Um, because these opportunities will set the stage for you for better ones and hopefully ones that will be paid. Um, and this is a very practical advice that I have, you know, I've come to realize, you know, why students always pivot away, away from foreign policy and politics and international affairs. And there's a reason why, because, you know, most of the opportunities that are usually offered are unpaid. And so the the big advice here is, it's okay, you know, you will find a way. I know we, you know, we are all students, we're all broke, but um, <laughs> for my, you know, honestly, for my first internship in, in DC, I had to work two jobs, the internship, and then work a job at the restaurant to um, to cover, you know, my living expenses. And so um, if you find a way, it'll it'll get better, trust me. That's that's wonderful to hear. And um, also, similarly, I would ask how or what kind of advice you would give to students that are just starting as freshmen? What would you say to them in terms of finding opportunities and putting themselves out there for, you know, having the opportunity to do things that you've done? Yeah, I think uh, a great part is there's a lot of final uh, projects that are, you know, uh, final papers that we tend to just 
do it for the sake of passing their class. And you have no idea how important these are further down the road when you compile a such good amount of writing mm -hmm. and so you can publish it later down the road. So as a freshman, you might not have as exposure as much as uh, into internships and experiential, experience, um, uh, experiential opportunities, but you can and you can focus on on you know those those final papers that you submit to professors from one end you have content to for to publish later on in in journals which is extremely important for graduate school applications or for law schools as well um but at the same time you are you know you're standing out to your professors that might potentially write you a letter of recommendation to any for anything that you might apply for, either internship or grad school. So I think that's a, that's something that I didn't see as a freshman or even sophomore, and that would be really important. And that's not to mention, of course, uh, all the events that uh, that are organized on campus. I mean, anyone who's interested in in either security, cybersecurity, but also international affairs, politics, international politics. The Global National Security Institute is a great, um, you know, rising think tank, but is also part of USF, and they they organize great conferences, really like top notch. Um, and one of the very few ones that are available to you, not just in Tampa, in, in Florida. Um, and so I think this is a great opportunity to take advantage of it. Go to their events, their conferences. They have one coming up and uh, very soon, and and just walk up to the experts they host they bring in experts from not just the us from dc but from you know from abroad and so take advantage of these opportunities go up and talk to them present yourself and you never know how things might turn out because that's how one of my internship the next my second internship in dc i was at a random event and i spotted a person who was wearing a lebanese and american flag mm -hmm. on a pin on his blazer and I ended up grabbing coffee with him and he offered me um, an internship as his uh, at his organization. So you simply walk up to people. Uh, it's, you know, a reality as well as it's not what you know, it's who you know. As cliche as it sounds in this field, it's very important to talk to people, to walk up to people and mm -hmm. to break up. You know, it's going to be very hard the first couple of times, but it gets easier. I think that's amazing advice, especially for underclassmen, to always be putting yourself out there. Uh, you never know when you're going to have an experience or meet a person who literally changes everything for you. And I think those are really important moments to try and give yourself the opportunity to have. I think that also goes to show that college is what you make of it. You know, mm -hmm. you can, you know, sit and go to class and once class is over, you can pack up your bag and leave or you can kind of choose to do something more. And I think you've really demonstrated that and are a good, um, you know, person for people to look up to for that. And um, yeah. Um, so as we've talked about all your amazing accomplishments and achievements and experiences, uh, we have to ask the final question of what's next for you? <laughs> uh, this this is the question that I ask myself right now. So uh, <laughs> It is a very tricky question. It doesn't matter how many internships you have, how much stuff you have done. It might get even more difficult to figure out, and I think it's fine. But, <laughs> but um, so I am currently in the application process with ONS um, for three main scholarships, um, Fulbright, um, mm -hmm. the Marshall Scholarship, and the Rhodes Scholarship. The three of them are scholarships for towards graduate schools. Uh, the Fulbright, which some of you might be aware of, is a is a graduate uh, school grant as well, but it could also be for a research abroad grant um, or teaching English abroad as well. So these are all available for um, fresh graduates or, you know, you can apply during your senior year, but you can apply up to two years after graduation. Uh, so I'm doing this and I'm doing the Marshall as well, uh, which is a two year you, a master's in in the UK, the first year and the second are two different master degrees that it funds, fully funds. And the Rhodes Scholarship is definitely one of the most prestigious ones in the country. Um, and it also funds you um, two years and two different master's degrees in uh, at, the, at Oxford University. And so these are these. Th this is my plan for now. I mean, this is not maybe a plan, but I am working to fly and it's you know, a fly and a fly and a fly. This is the best thing you can do. I've also um, won 
Fresh Graduate Fellowship in mind at the U.S. Department of Treasury that I'm, you know, I will consider and will apply to, um, just just in case. But uh, yeah, I think I think what's next on the short term it's that, and on on the longer term is is really being able to change the way um, I think anyone in the world thinks about the Near East or the Middle Eastern region. There's so much going on there right now that people tend to forget the history mm -hmm. and the depth that this region has offered to the world. Um, you know, from Iraq to Egypt to Lebanon, th there's been so many civilizations and cultures and, and the science that this region has offered to the world. I think this is something on the long term. You can do this in many different ways. I might do this using development work and economics. Someone else might do it through, you know, engineering or, or medical or neuroscience or whatsoever. But I think this is this is my longer term or, you know, mm -hmm. longer term goal. Well, um, we applaud you for uh, working to tell the story of the Middle East um, and working to, you know, change um, perspectives on, you know, the history of that region. And we wish you the best in all of those uh, graduate applications, fellowship applications, um, and we hope those uh, work out for you. Yeah, we'll be cheering you on. Can't wait to see <laughs> what's in store for you in the future. So thank you so much for joining us, and it's been a pleasure getting to talk to you. Well, thank you. The pleasure was mine. everyone thanks for joining us back in the studio that was such a fun episode it was really cool not just to hear about you know how chris has you know secured all these scholarships and things but actually to hear about his journey as a person through college and all the things that he's learned from just getting to know people um throughout all the organizations he's mm -hmm. been a part of i think it's lovely to hear that somebody has found their space in a place, you know, he's talked about how he didn't know anybody coming to usf but he's really cultivated this home here mm -hmm. And, you know, speaking of opportunities and places to get involved at USF, don't forget to check the honorable newsletter and our website at usf.edu forward slash honors for all upcoming events, news and updates. That will do it for this week's episode. The Honorable Podcast is recorded in the Judy Genshaft Honors College at the University of South Florida Tampa campus. Production assistance is provided by honor student Sandra Napolitano and Professor Adam Davidson. Thank you all so much for listening, and please do not forget to rate and review our podcast. We appreciate your feedback. Please join us next week to hear more honor stories and talk to members of the Judy Genshaft Honors College community. Until next time, go Bulls!